Hey everyone, I just wanted to get on here and pray for some of the needs of Ukraine. Um, some of you like to pray with music, some of you don't. Um, I normally don't like to, but it's probably going to be pretty boring for you all just to listen to my voice and my prayers for Ukraine to the Lord. So I put on some music. Um, no, this is not going to be your Hillsong, your Hillsong United, your Hillsong Young and Free, or Chris Tomlin, or whatever Christian contemporary band that you're used to hearing in a modern day church. Um, that stuff's alright, but personally it's not for me. If it's for you, cool. But what this is going to be is a mixture of Christian rock and Christian metal. So, let's get started. 5.2 million people bear the burden of the armed conflict in eastern Ukraine. 5.2 million. That is a lot of people. So, dear Lord, we pray for those 5.2 million people that you keep them safe on this ongoing conflict, that you keep their homes in the eastern front safe, that you bring them out of whatever tyranny they are under right now, and that you bring them the needed aid and support from family members and people from surrounding towns. Um, number two, there's also a huge problem with landmines that the Russians leave, and I'm sure some of those landmines have been there since Cold War era. So, dear Lord, I pray that you bring the people with the skills and the abilities to dismantle those landmines or repurpose them for the defense of Ukraine. I pray that anyone affected negatively by those mines or lives taken by those mines, that they are either healed or the, the left of their family members are consoled because of their loss. Um, I pray that you take care of the situation as swiftly as possible. Um, the next one is escalating psychological trauma. And like, it's hard for us to imagine being shelled, mortared, shot at, going to the grocery store, or just going out for a walk. But this is these people's lives daily in eastern Ukraine on the front. And there is no, you know, psychologist, counselor, sometimes it's not even a friend to talk to. So dear God, I pray for the psychological health of all the people that are under distress or under oppression on the eastern front of Ukraine. I also pray for the fighting men and women of the Ukrainian armed forces, that you give them the strength to, to protect themselves, to protect their families, and to protect their homeland. Um, Lord, I also pray for the Russian aggressors, the Russian aggressors, that you give them a change of heart, and that they leave Ukraine and pay reparations for making war and for committing uh, war crimes. So, Lord, I also pray for number four, which is the lack of access to basic services. So, because it's a war zone, a lot of people that have had the chance have evacuated and that would also be you know police fire and ems you know the, the people that are needed the most you know some of them evacuate some of them get killed in the crossfire so do lord i pray that you bring in more emergency services to the eastern front to aid the people that are living there that are trapped there that can't move because of whatever situation they're in. Um, I also pray that you bring emergency services, the Red Cross, the Red Crescent from other countries into Ukraine to help them um, persevere through this challenging time and to bring the needed me medical aid there. So then we're going to break it down to be a little bit more specific. The, the two towns or cities that I found that are within the front line or there have been battles there. I'm going to butcher the names of these towns, so I apologize from there. Um, Donetsk and Luhushka. Um, just a personal story, one of my friends that I met, he is initially from Donetsk, but his family had the means to go west, so they went to Kyiv. 
so I thank God that he's not there, but he still has friends that are there, maybe even relatives. So Lord, I, I pray for these two towns, these two cities, that you give them a wall of spiritual power, a wall of angels around them to protect them from the aggressors. I also pray that you give the people the ability to rebuild their cities once the invasion has stopped and once things cool down and there's a ceasefire and longevity of assured peace so that they don't have to rebuild a multiple time. On number seven, over 3,000 civilians have been killed and injured approximately 9,000 since 2014 and that's a lot of people and Ukraine is constantly under threat from Russia unfortunately um, there are some people in Russia that don't believe Ukraine is a country they believe that they broke off from Russia and that they are rogue kind of like the same situation where China does not recognize Taiwan as a country. It recognizes them as people that had broken off, you know, as traitors, basically. Um, so, Lord, I pray for the situation that you heal the ties between Russia and Ukraine, that you remind them that they are Slavic cousins, and that they should work together and give peace a chance. And I pray that you know, at some point in time, not in the future, or as soon as possible, that the Russian government apologizes and asks for forgiveness for stealing the land of Crimea and for killing the defenders of Ukraine and civilians. And I pray that after they apologize, that these two countries can live peacefully. And I also pray for the 3,000 civilians that were killed. I pray for their families, that you comfort their families, and that those 3,000 people are with you in heaven. And I also pray for the 9,000 killed. Not killed, the 9,000 injured. That you heal them both spiritually, emotionally, and physically. And that you get them back to a safe place. Or help them get through the situation they have to be in. Um, Women and elderly are very affected by this. Um, the elderly are more susceptible, more susceptible, susceptible because of age. They don't get around as quickly. Maybe they don't hear as well. Um, and women, you know, these people are at a bigger risk of abuse and exploitation and neglect. You know, when in a war zone, terrible things happen. You know, like you heard in the news where mercenaries were trafficking in women and children raping and plundering and all that stuff and these terrible things have happened since biblical times and they still happen today so we need to pray against these things um, lord i pray for the women and the elderly of ukraine especially on the eastern front that you keep them safe from all unwanted advances any attacks from satan or the enemy I pray that you keep them safe and that you give them the ability to protect themselves or give their husbands or brothers or even sons the ability to protect them. Another problem is the lack of jobs and coping mechanisms because it's a war zone. So do God, I pray that once this war is over and that people are safe to return, that businesses come back and invest or reopen again so that people can have a place to work and a, a way to take care of themselves and their families. Um, I also pray that in the meantime that you bring positive coping mechanisms, that you bring people to help spiritually, or you bring people to help with, with, with medical, like I've said before, bringing the Red Cross, the Red Crescent, you know, Samaritan's Purse. Um, what I would really want you to do is bring in, in a humanitarian exchange myself and my organization if you are so willing to anoint us to do this is to go and help on the Eastern Front with spiritual aid 
aid with food, aid with caring for children. Um, I am very much open to going to the front and caring for these people, and that even goes to caring for the Ukrainian de defenders that are on the front lines defending their homes, their families, and their countrymen from aggression from Russia. Um, I don't have any qualms in helping those men and women out. Um, so Lord, I also pray for there's restrictions of movement because of, you know, the attacks, the shelling, the bombing, you know, the mortars, you know, the random gunshots, you know, we don't deal with that going to the store or going to school, you know, we're not getting shot at, well, some of us are unfortunately because of the, the riots, but normally these things aren't happening to us, we don't have to worry about our movements, our movements aren't really restricted, usually, but this has been happening for 2014, you know, we're getting close to 10 years this has been happening, and when they lived under Soviet oppression, their movements were also restricted. So, Lord, I pray that you loosen the movements, that you get these people to be able to be where they need to be when they need to be there, that you also give them the ability to get them out of there, get them into a safer position, and that any restrictions that are needed to keep them in their homes you give them the heart and the wisdom to break those restrictions to get to a safer place. And um, I'd also like to, this is coming from my heart, and I'd like to personally pray for two of the orphanages that I would like Humanitarian Exchange to partner with in either, you know, giving food, clothes, maybe some English lessons, you know, having a positive tie between nations and just carrying adults there to care for these children. So there's usually not an adult adult to care for all these children, but these are the two orphanages that I know of that are doing as best as they can and they're doing well. I know more about one than I do the other. Um, one of the orphanages is Republic Pilgrim. Um, they're in Miryapol, Ukraine, that is close to the Eastern Front. Um, there was battles there. I don't know if there is currently or not. Um, the pastor and his wife that have been running that or orphanage for multiple years are, you know, Mother Teresa-like. They've adopted, I believe he said, 30 plus kids over the years and has raised them in, to adulthood until they moved out and started their own families. So. You know, if this man and wife can adopt 30 kids, and they also have a biological child or two of their own, you know, it speaks volumes that the world can adopt and the adoption problem can end. Um, the other orphanage I'd like to pray for is True Hope Ukraine. Um, you know, True Hope, it is in Kiev, not Kiev, sorry, it is in Kravoy Road. And um, I don't know a whole lot about them. I know that the church from the town that I'm from supports them. Um, I would like humanitarian exchange to be able to support them. I'd like us to be able to help them with with renovation of their building, you know, with caring for the kids, with helping with in with English lessons, you know, doing whatever is needed to foster that aid and human compassion. Um, I'd like to get in contact with them and help them out any way possible. And then lastly, I'd like to pray for everyone watching. I know that some of you are against this and some of you don't want prayer. I hope that you're open to it, but if you're not, that's okay and I don't mean any offense by this. And for those of you that want prayer, I appreciate it. I'll do the best that I can. So, Lord God, I pray for everyone who is watching this or who may want to watch this, I pray that you show yourself to them, that you reveal that you are real, that you give them physical, tangible proof that they know that you are real, and that when they ask for your forgiveness of sins, and ask for Jesus to come into their heart and change their ways, that they can too live forever in the kingdom of God, in your kingdom. Um, I pray that protect everyone that is watching. I pray that you provide for everyone, and I also pray that you bring a swift 
end to coronavirus, that you put things back on track to as close to normal as possible. Um, I, I also pray for everyone's mental health. I pray that you give people positive outlets to get through the rest of this COVID-19 quarantine stuff. Um, I also pray that you foster new friendships and new relationships for people and that you also mend anything going wrong in their life or you help people get a new job when this is all through. It's just in his name I pray. Amen. Thanks guys. I'll probably, we'll say, we'll do one of these every Friday focusing on Ukraine and other countries in Eastern Europe and we'll just pray for their needs. And if any of you have needs and you would like me to pray for them, humble servant I am, go ahead and drop them in the comments. And if any of you want to know what bands these are, go ahead and drop that in the comments too, and I will link you to these people as well. Um, these are all Christian bands. Uh, the members are practicing Christians. Some of them are pastors. So it's not just you know Christian contemporary music that have Christians all different shades and styles of music. So thank you for watching, and have a great night.